Hello friends, Vera Structors. I'm Jess. This is my husband Micah. Together we are Vera Struct. So before we get started today, I would like to invite you to like this video and subscribe to our channel. For those of you who are already subscribed, thank you so much. It's really nice. We're really, we're really grateful that you watch our videos and that you, um, yeah, that you tune in. So I've been very fascinated lately about this idea of that, what, it, what reality is. And it feels like we all have a different conception of what reality is. Mm -hmm. And that's important because it, it feeds into what we think truth is, what we think morality is, what our mm -hmm. beliefs are. It ultimately comes from that. And I'm painfully aware that most people are not cognizant, they're not self-aware of their, of what they consider to be reality. Case in point is, I, I think, I think I have a very strong belief now and have cultivated a belief that reality is the thing that we're that we're trying to build upon what do you mean? as a society um, so if you've been on this channel you've heard us use the term humanism that's to describe this idea of building upon reality um, we create layers and we create you know metaphysical coverings mm -hmm. over what reality actually is to the point where we think reality is about money mm -hmm. it's about power it's about competition and those are things that are so clearly from my point of view are so clearly things that we've added on top of you know it's uh it's halloween today and what's that exactly what is that <laughs> the only reason why i bring it up because it's true i don't i don't like any really events actually i think it's better that we live our lives like every day is a you miraculous mean, do event you mean holidays no any event i think every day should be a miraculous day yeah it's just funny it just makes you sound like a like an emo kid in high school i don't like any events if you just stop it there your your reasoning is lovely every day is miraculous Thank i you. completely agree <laughs> I am an emo kid, so thank you. So, so I'm talking about Halloween, and we got sidetracked. Sorry about that. Reality, humanism. The reason why I talk about Power. it is because this is a wonderful example of a time where we put things, we create a role for ourselves to have fun and, and to enjoy this day of Halloween. We literally dress up as things that are not reality more often than not we dress up as things that ah. do not exist but we do that every day i like where you're going oh i love where you're going we do that every day <laughs> and yet you sidetracked it sorry <laughs> i love it i love it go on go, go ahead going. make fun of me being an emo kid and then we'll never get to the oh, keep going keep going keep going so that's what we do and so we think our reality is the dress up that we're doing and the play that we're achieving. Um, we talked about in our other video with Kanye West that he's convinced that if we put more money mm -hmm. and we had more cultural value on creativity, that we'd, we'd live better lives, that the artists are the ones that help create better lives. It's not the scientists. Interesting. And I think there's some truth to that. Yeah. Um, the scientists were, that we really revere were kind of artists, actually. Um, they, they would not have fit into the science mold of today. Um, even someone like Einstein didn't fit into the science mold of his day. He was, he was considered very creative and to some degree a little... a little uh, capricious. Anyway, he was someone that was hard to define and to pin down and keep on the staff of your university. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And yet those are the people that we now talk about as being the really awesome people. Anyway, oh, so, we, so we play this game so and I am thoroughly convinced that reality is the thing beneath all of that. Totally. It's the fact that we need plants to survive. And we just act like that's a given. It, it is sort of a given, but it's also a wonderful thing. It's so much better than what we're doing on top of it. Well, and it's like, just to expound on that, that we need plants to survive. It's on so many different levels. Even that part of reality has so many different layers. Like animals need plants in order to stay alive. And, you know, we might be eating the animals or using the animals for different things. Um, we need the, the air from the plants in order to live. You know, we have the birds and the bugs and everything is just all connected to plants. Right. Like, we need plants. So, mm -hmm. anyway, I just thought I'd say that. And I yeah. actually, what's interesting is that the other day I was actually thinking that we should do a video on this. So, I didn't, we didn't previously know what we were going to talk about before we started this video. So, yeah, I've been thinking about reality a lot as well and how 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 many layers we've created on top of what reality actually is and what i a way that um i love it was uh, a way that it was it has been framed for me that i absolutely love is in um the four agreements book which is a great book um the author opens in the introduction just talking about how we're all living in a personal dream and i absolutely love that um comparison so it's like yes we're not living in reality we are living in this dream that we've kind of created for ourselves so if we're thinking about allopathic medicine i would say that that's kind of a dream that we've created for ourselves where we're like this is truth right. this is always right this is the only way to do it and this is helpful all the time every time right entire science based off of the germ yeah theory yes so it's like it's really interesting like it's it's a dream that we're living in and um i find myself being as i've kind of woken up throughout the years in different manners and I'm not I don't think I'm completely woken up from the dream that I've been living in but um awake yeah but um it's something that I was thinking about the other day and I don't openly mention this to a lot of people so I'll just say it on the internet I guess now everybody can know if they feel like wanting to know but I'm really into the like bachelor and bachelorette shows and it's really funny because why am I? And <laughs> I really like, I like sometimes even get into the gossip of it all. And I was kind of assessing like, why am I interested in this? Like, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's a waste of my time. I have so many other wonderful things that I can be doing. It's not rooted in reality, even though it's called quote unquote reality TV. And I realized that one of the reasons why I have been so interested in it, especially the last few years, it's almost, it's almost been my way of when I need to escaping back into the dream that our society has created for us, just so that I'm in touch with that dream. Does that make any sense? Well, people will often call it escapism, so you're kind of doing the opposite as you're saying that this is, this is a journey back into, I guess it is a form of escapism because yeah. you're going away from what actual reality is to what human created reality is. And I don't know about you, but I've often heard the phrase like, this is reality, and then you describe some man-made thing like money finances yeah they're um, like this like is the real starvation world. yeah this is the real world the real world is starvation and financial troubles the real world is that and you need to get a job and you need to sorry you need you need 10 years of experience in that job before you can get the job that you actually want sorry that's just and even that's not me. true. It's not true. <laughs> that's not even true within the context of man-made exactly. reality, which is hilarious. But that's what people call reality a lot of the time. Correct. When actual reality is 
there's a lot of plants around you that you could eat could eat that you don't know about. And if you're really starving, I invite anyone who's really, really starving. We live in a desert. There's still stuff to eat. So look to the plants. The plants have things for you to eat. Now, do you need some knowledge that we've lost over the past centuries, millennia? Yeah, we've lost that knowledge. And there's a lot of new knowledge to be gained that even in the past centuries and millennia, they never learned mm -hmm. about what you can eat and what you can't eat and what you can use in your environment. And uh, once again, we live in a desert. So if I'm saying that about here, imagine what I could be saying about a place that has quite a bit of plant life. Um, actually, I'd be more worried about, about um, like here, I wouldn't be so worried about there being like poisonous things mm -hmm. to eat. We're instead in a plentiful place. I'm, I, I would exercise more caution anyway. <laughs> What I'm making is the actual reality is plants are here for us and we've lost our connection with them and we don't have to engage with any of the realities. Realities, yeah. The man-made realities. If we have our, if we're well connected to nature and with plants. So what do you mean we don't have to experience those realities? Cause we don't have to experience air pollution. Right, right. We don't right. have to experience starvation. Personally, these are all personal things. Okay. Um, we don't have to, and that's why Veristruct is about inviting all people, you, us, to engage with these ideas and to learn them because, and to reconnect with nature. Because if we all do this, then we can end stuff like poverty and starvation and financial troubles because they it won't so exist. True. It is so true. It's almost like people are starving solely and anybody can correct me if they think I'm wrong but people are starving solely because of the humanist um, illusion of reality that we've created so I forget which country has the lowest GDP per capita but it's mm -hmm. one of the African countries and right. I think it's one of the central African countries it's, that makes sense. it's one of the smaller ones in there and I, I'm sorry I don't I don't remember precisely which one it is um, my understanding is it's close to Uganda, but it's not Uganda. Um, they have a culture of farming their own food. It, it's not as strong as maybe it might have been in past centuries and millennia right. as, as, uh, as a, you know, human, as humanity as a whole. But they have a stronger culture of that. And that's why $200 a year is still, you know, a really small number. And, but they're and able they could to probably, sustain themselves. And they probably could use some more money than that, more GDP than that. They don't starve to death. I mean, I'm sure starvation is an issue there. And it, and it, and it, Especially people and who it are might not be able more, to farm. And it might be more of an issue than other places. I'm just saying that money isn't everything. And when you have a connection with the earth, then money loses its value. And that's why they have a 200 GDP per capita and not everyone's dead already. Because if everyone had 200 GDP per capita and they were living in per like year a city in sitting. the United States, anywhere in the United States, anywhere. you'd be yeah. dead. You'd be dead within the year because we can't do that unless we reconnect with the earth once again. Well, and that's, what's, that's what I'm just so, I don't know, fascinated with right now is just the fact that we live is that to a certain degree we can't escape this dream that human humans have created for themselves. Well, it's not a dream anymore. It's been made reality. It might have been a dream at some point and over the course of millennia we've we've turned it into the structure. I guess I call it a dream because it's not tangible. It's not like tangible in the sense that it's not like it's not real. Like someone saying like, oh, cities are helpful because you're able to have all of these businesses together and have all of these right. people living close to their... But then you're even more disconnected they work. from nature. And if you don't make $1,000 per month, yeah, then you'll die. You need to make more than that if you're going to live in the city. But I'm yeah. saying you could possibly survive yeah. for $1,000. <laughs> You'd be homeless, but you could do it. Right. <laughs> you could do it. So I don't know, like the reason I say this dream is because people are so 
it does seem like people actually need to wake up from something because I've had a lot of, um, you know, conversations with people close to me or just seeing the way that people are thinking lately about society and about how they, they believe it to be rooted in truth. Like the way that we're living as a society is rooted in actual truth. And to me, it seems like they need to wake up. So that's why I refer to it still as a dream. Yes, it's the reality of living in society, but that reality is still a dream. Right. It's sounding like Inception now, but... <laughs> well, <laughs> like and I want to go back to this point of, of what we think reality is shapes everything we do. Mm-hmm. And it's really interesting is that If I know anything about human nature is that we're hypocrites. Totally. And most of the time I like to think, and I think this is the case, that we're hypocrites by ignorance. Mm -hmm. So that's why some people say the more more serious condition is ignorance, not hypocrisy. But we live in the age of the internet where if you are open to things... You have to be open. If you're open to things, you have more information than than anyone a hundred years ago mm-hmm. would have had. Mm-hmm. So what ends up happening is we're more closed. And I mean that like psych- psychologically, we're closed as humanity now. And we become more closed because as technology has become more free and flowing and pushing stuff towards us, we become more closed. And for good reason, because like we talked about in another video, the information being pushed at us is not, it, it kind of seems like it's the same information all the time. You know, it's always just like three things. Well, I really it's like hate this person, love this person, and um, follow this rule. And, and here's, here's how the world works. Well, and it's like, let me finish. Sure, sure. So it's like, um, and that shapes our reality mm-hmm. and what we think reality is. And it gets us thinking that these man-made processes make sense. And maybe we get part of it, but we don't get all of it. And, and so at some point, we need to prioritize um, truth. And what I mean by that is, let's say I get diet right, but I get everything else just average. So I'm getting a little bit wrong, a little bit right with everything else, except for diet. I get 100% right. Am I going to live a happy, healthy life? No, I'm not, because there's so many other things that I'm doing that are hurting me, that are affecting me, that are attacking my, literally attacking my body. Mm -hmm. Talked about in the last video, we literally sacrifice our heart (laughs) to what we think this reality is. We go, here you go, you can have my heart. And the man-made reality just says, okay, now you're going to have... Now you're going to die from chronic heart disease. We attach our identity so, so often to man-made ideas and the reality that's been created for us. Maybe that's the subconscious thing we're doing, but ultimately it's just ignorance. It's being closed. It's ignorance. Yeah. And maybe we're attaching our identity to certain things and being like, no, I'm going to keep holding on to these, Mm -hmm. even if that means I have to sacrifice my heart. Um, And that's... Anyway, just let me... Okay. Let me. Okay. 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 The point I'm getting at is that people aren't aware Mm -hmm. that there's a lot of contradictions in what we think reality is. That will go so far as to say, oh, diet's very, very, very important. But um, how I engage with the medical system doesn't matter. And that's very strange to say. Um, it, it, it's a contradiction by my, by my viewpoint. It's a very huge contradiction. It feels like I care about this part of health, but absolutely don't care about this part of health. And I'm willing to just blow in the wind with this other part. Mm-hmm. And, and it's not because we're dumb. It's not because it, it's not a willful, you know, malevolence. I don't think it is most of the time. I think there are bad actors that are just horrible people. And I think they do exist. But I think there are a smaller percentage of the population. I think there's a large percentage of us who go, 
oh, I'm just living my life and I'm just making decisions on the fly and I'm not thinking previously about what my understanding of reality is. Is it based in physical? Is it based in physics? Is it based in, in, yeah, what ideas shape my reality? Because you could go thinking that, oh, capitalism is good. And then you get to a certain point and you realize, oh, capitalism is not good anymore. And, and that might be fine to think, you know, that might be a fine thing to think, Mm -hmm. but you're not letting it shape your reality. You're just reacting to different ideas. Well, hey, that's very, very good. I'm trying to remember what else I was going to say. It's very interesting. I really love this topic a lot. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I think a lot of people will go... I don't know. A lot of us are, are closed off. And I'm sorry I keep talking about this dream concept, but a lot of us are so closed off and we're, we're subconsciously, um, what's the word? We're subconsciously kind of forcing ourselves to live in this dream because we'd be uncomfortable um, having, being woken up. It's uncomfortable to wake up from a nice dream that you're living in, right? But mm-hmm. I really, um, I wanted to speak to what you were saying about information because so many of us, um, all of us, we're living in this time when there is so much information to the point that we can say no thank you to information because there's so much of it. And every, I liked what you said the other day when we were talking about this, you said every morning when you wake up, you decide what information you're going to entertain and what information you are going to push away. Mm -hmm. Because I I certainly like to think... Because it's a river. It's a very swift river flowing to your brain. And you can only take so much. Um, So people have to make the decision, and a lot of people's decisions are based... On the fly. On the fly. They're just like, oh, oh, not this. And then, yeah, even deeper than that, it's, it's rooted in their... Um, how awake they are. That's partly true. It's also partly true that they make... Most people, like basically everybody, at some point makes the decision, oh, I'm going to listen to this and not listen to this because I have a friend, I have family members, I this is the way I Grew have up. community. Yeah. If you're willing to accept everything, you become social vagabonds like me. And and then you go and you try and have community with anyone on the face of the planet, and it's really difficult to have community, which is why I don't really have any friends. And and while I I want you know while I can cry about it and be sad about it, at the same time I'm glad because I know why I don't have friends. It's because I am open to everything. That when you know someone talks and they're they're saying this very extreme point of view, I go, I see where you're coming from, but do you see this other side too? And they go, no, I don't see that other side. I can't see that other side. I've negated it from my brain. I've disavowed it. I cannot engage with it, Cause which is fine. I'm just like, fine, that's the path you chose, but now you know why you don't feel a lot of kinship with me. Because mm-hmm. I feel kinship with people who are willing to break the norms and Mm -hmm. and listen to more information than is comfortable um so i had a that doesn't mean we need to focus on the negativity though that's one thing i will say though okay because there's we live we live in a time of of um reductionist information and -hmm. what i mean by that is we're doing a lot of, hey, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. And that's not as helpful. Um, you can solve a thousand problems with one good solution. So it's important that we focus on solutions. That our reality is not about deconstruction. Mm-hmm. It's about building up. But not building up just any sector. That's the problem. We keep having 
we live in the meta modern era, so everything that we're doing is is trying to build up, but we're trying to build up very niche places. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to be part of the autistic community online. Well, then you have to be pro LGBTQ. And while that's fine and good, it's a little strange that those two are connected. Why are they connected? They don't have to be. Why can't you allow someone who's autistic be a part of the autistic community online? Mm -hmm. That's not me, by the way. It's a a close friend of mine and cousin. He's had this issue. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They've, They've been very mean to him. And he can't be a part of the community because he's not willing to accept that... Um, and this is his point of view, though I agree with it, that um, it's good for your health to be to make to transition. Let's say that that's good for your health, though the science shows that it's not, it's ambiguous whether could, it's good for your health. We could do an entire video on. That's the, not the point the I'm da- making. Well, let me just say, I'm sorry. It's easy to get down those rabbit holes of this is wrong. I wasn't going to. I wasn't going to. This is whatever. And it's like, it's better to go, okay, mm-hmm. what is the good thing that solves a thousand problems? Right. And the fact is that when you are willing to accept who you are, mm-hmm. you live a better life. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that you're perfect. And it doesn't mean that you can't make changes in your life. We, what do we call it? Body neutrality? Yeah, that's what I was just going to mention. That's all. Okay. So we should make another video about body neutrality, specifically about how changing our bodies is in conflict with body neutrality and, that, and body positivity. And that's the same whether it's makeup or anything else. Exactly. So it's, it's even those things are all related to it. I totally agree. And so, I, I mean... For the longest time, I wore shirts that didn't fit me. And now I finally have a shirt that fits me and I wear it in every single one of these videos because it fits me. I finally have a better understanding of what my bo- where my body needs to be. Mm-hmm. It's not my image of my body. It's what my body actually is. Mm, that's right. And I've got wide shoulders. Like how I think you should wear skinny jeans. <laughs> I have wide but shoulders. But the fact of the matter is that you can't wear skinny I jeans. I cannot. <laughs> these legs... These legs are too big. But he looks great in skinny jeans. If they fit. (laughs) Even if they don't fit. I wish (laughs) to. It's just so. But here he is, this guy, and he wants to be part of the autistic community online. Why? Because he's autistic. He wants a social system that understands his, his shortcomings or his differences. Right? And, and some of his positivity, because I think there is positive There's aspects to being autistic, actually. Of course. I don't, I don't think it's... I think someone should have a choice in that matter if it's something that's clearly a choice. But anyway. Anyway. Why does he have to accept a particular political or philosophical position to be a part of that community. Well, that's a sign of metamodernism. That's a sign that we don't, we're not self-aware of our realities. It's happening a lot in birth we're work right now. We're not self-aware. And we go, we go, great example is if you're a feminist here in the United States, you do not agree with any of the points of feminists outside of the United States. You don't. And maybe you do with other... The liberal feminists. Yeah, maybe. maybe with other Western cultures like maybe those in France you might agree with those in France you might agree with those in the UK but you don't agree with the feminists in the entire continent of Africa or the entire continent of Asia so fascinating you don't agree with them they're not cool with prostitution (laughs) uh, most countries are not cool with surrogacy as a feminist point of view yeah not as a normal point of view. As a feminist As a point very of view. feminist point of view. It is yeah. considered feminine to be against prostitution, against surrogacy, surrogacy, and yet here in the United States, for some reason, the liberal feminists are. So you have to ask yourself, what are you basing your reality on? And I can give you a little hint. If you're having a hard time finding community, then you're probably doing a lot better than most people. 
Because most people, they pick their community and then they shape their reality to match the community that they're a part of. Wow. And it's so true. It's so true. It doesn't mean that people don't have divergences within the community. Of course they do. They totally do. Everybody's different. And people, correct. But they're trying to shape their realities to match. And I, I agree with you 100% because I was similar to this when I was younger where I, I would do that very often. I would find a community, as I was you know, just trying to figure myself out, obviously. You know, as a teenager, all of us do this at some point or another. I don't know if you really did it, but <laughs> you find a community and you try to I was embody that community. So I was like into pageants, tried to embody that, cheerleader, What's the other thing I did? And then, you know, hipster, you know, whatever that is. <laughs> oh, well, you definitely did it for a little bit. But people called you hipster much longer than you were actually doing it. You yeah, know I mean? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Someone the other day called me hipster. I'm like, so what makes you say that? And they essentially said, oh, your age. And I was oh. like, well, good to know that you're being prejudiced based off you, of someone's age well, instead of someone's actual. You have a beard. And you listen to alternative music. Sure. Hipster. Hipster. No, alternative music is not the correct way to describe what I listen to. Okay. Um, my the only genre music. that I actually consistently like is IDM. So that's different. That's that is not different. alternative. I feel like we don't even listen to IDM that much. Yeah, we do. Oh, okay. Boards of Canada, Aphex Twin. Okay. My bad. I didn't listen, know what it was called. Listen to a but little I really bit like of, uh, of uh, Bibio has made IDM like stuff. That's true. And then there's. Um, anyway. There's a whole bunch. Yeah. Anyway. Tai, tai Cho. So our question is what are you basing your. What type of reality are you basing your actions on mm -hmm. is it is it a man art is it an artificial reality constructed by man that you're playing into or joining into or is it a reality that is is it your personal reality that you've created for yourself or is it actual reality right and is it okay to have kind of your own little world i think it's okay maybe to have your own little world I think that's yeah, what dreams are made of. Maybe we're postmodernists in that way. Maybe. But I'll say it time and time again. You should be able to be accepted by other people even if you don't agree. Yeah. Uh, even a majority of the things. Yeah. You want to be a part of co the community, a certain community, and you're willing to um, help that community grow or, help, you know, whatever. Who cares what your race is, what your political beliefs, what your philosophical beliefs? Oh my gosh. I don't... You should be accepted those are all, regardless. Honestly, it's all... Those are all human constructs. All of those things. That's true. Like race even. Like I, exactly. I'm, not, I'm not one of those people that's like, be colorblind. Because I think you should see the color of people's skin and acknowledge it. But just the idea of like, just the stereotypes around being black right. or the experience of being a black person like i don't anyway i we've gotten into that in other videos right. so i mean ultimately I what, that, what is your reality the reality yeah the reality i believe <laughs> in sidetracked a lot let me give you the specifics of what i think reality is I great think reality is that the greatest happiness you can have is living it's not doing all these activities after that you know it's waking up and just being happy you're awake it's eating and just being happy to enjoy the food that you're eating. We don't enjoy food anymore. We're always interested in the convenience of it now. Yeah, I want you to sit down and have a meal. And whenever you have a meal, you enjoy it. You enjoy every bite. That's what I want. I want you to enjoy every bite. And I want it to be enjoyable hours later, days later. It's not like you had a bite and then you're like, oh, no. Now I, now, now I have high blood pressure. It's like, no, I want you to enjoy life and living and have it be a long-term enjoyment. And the way that that happens is we reconnect with nature. That's it's clear as day. You can't keep eating processed foods and not have some kind of 
food related illness mm -hmm. you can't keep breathing this bad polluted air that we have without having some kind of ramifications of that so i want us to enjoy life that's what i think reality is i Beautiful. don't think it's all this stuff that we humans try to do i think it's the stuff that animals do men and are that they might have joy and the animals enjoy mm -hmm. and the plants enjoy the plants just sit here look they just sit here and they have a blast look at they these beautiful grow. leaves they're beautiful and they're having a great time when did you put roots last put roots down Ooh. as a human you put Ooh. roots down and you said i can be here for a long time Ooh. And I can just sit in this light with this food, with this air, and just enjoy it, you know, and just be there. That's why to some degree I don't even like botanical gardens, because I'm like, why? As you can see, we have a botanical garden, <laughs> private botanical garden in our home, because it's, you go there, you relax, maybe you're one of those people that brings a book, you find a bench, and you sit there for hours and hours and hours, and you have a year... You have a year's membership, right. right, to that botanical garden. That's all well and good. But at some point you have to leave because it closes and you have to go home or go to work or whatever. So I want us to put our roots down and I want us to enjoy life and I want us to stop, to stop expecting people do things the right way. And what I mean by that is we do what's right and then we get the benefits and then we can persuade and invite other people to do it. But let's stop codifying and structuralizing and, and creating this system where we can't break free anymore. Where people have to do it. The government says they have to do this or else bad things will happen. And it's always something that's ambiguous whether it's good or bad. It's just like, does this actually help or does this make things worse? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. really care because I know some things that are unambiguous. Plants are unambiguously good. Mm -hmm. There's just no way of getting around it. They're just good. There's not a whole lot bad they can do. The worst thing that they can do is maybe destroy some of your property. <laughs> but that's a good thing in the end. <laughs> well, it's interesting because I think... Um, we were looking at some trees in our neighbor's yard and someone pointed one of the trees out and mm -hmm. said that tree will get under your foundation mm -hmm. and mess with it. And mess with it. It'll mess with this system or that system if it's too close to your house. And, I've and then they said, but it's one of the easiest trees to grow. So it's like, so... That's powerful. That's so cool. Uh, yeah, a tree that's so easy to grow even in the desert has this power to destroy foundations and stuff. And it's, it's like, like, that's what's, why. What's stronger, all of man's creations or God's creations? Right. So I wanted to, if it's okay, I'm going to talk about now what I see reality as. Sure. And I, I love what you said, and I, I do think that's true. Um, for me, it's, it's become very, very simple, and I still need to align with this more. So maybe... This is the reality that I want to acknowledge more in my life. But That's I, great. I need a fantastic. I'm still living in my dream, and I need These to wake up. People aren't somewhere. making any choices, so right. <laughs> you're not there yet, and you want to get there. That's uh -huh. great. Uh, my reality is very the reality that I want to acknowledge in my life the most and live in the most is just the reality that my earth was made for or blah, my body was made for the earth and the earth was made for my body um, and learn how to cultivate a life that um, celebrates that fact and that celebrates that reality is that the earth and the body are meant to work together and both thrive from that connection <laughs> it's funny that the people most saying that we're interdimensional beings are also the ones that are saying this our bodies were made for the earth and the earth was made for our bodies mm -hmm. isn't that interesting it is really interesting because at first you would think oh well then that means we're alien and we're just trying to survive and mm -hmm. this is really difficult and it's like no actually i oh Ooh, what so the tale of the princess kaguya is a lovely film by isao takahata film. and oh, at one point he was talking to the composer I'm sorry that I forget the composer's name. I even follow him on YouTube. But 
I forget the composer's name right now. He's a fantastic human being. But he was basically like, is this girl an alien or a human? Because she comes from the moon. Mm-hmm. She's a moon person. And Isao Takahata had the best thing to say. He said, she is alien, but in some ways she's more human than anyone else. And I love that. Because that's totally shown in the movie. She's so human. She just loves to... Be you know, barefoot. She climb loves up to trees. get scratches on her arm and she, you know, to look at nature and to be even a little bit starving and playing and getting beat up and stuff. And that's what she enjoys. And that just and makes me cry. <laughs> I don't know why. And so that's what we're saying. We're saying at the same time, we are interdimensional beings, but that makes us, that doesn't mean that we're less natural. It yeah. might actually mean we're more natural. Be human and exist on the earth and love it. I think that's honestly our biggest message with Fairy Strut. Right. Be human, exist on the earth, and just love it. Yeah, enjoy and your be time free. here. free. I want you to get to the end of your life, and I want someone to ask you, like, hey, did you enjoy, did you enjoy it? And I want you to be able to say yes, unequivocally. Yes, I enjoyed it. And... I don't know many of us can say that. And you enjoyed the real parts of life. Well, that's the only way you can enjoy it. Yeah. There's no way. We all know this. People who have immense power and influence over the man-made reality are not happy. They're not happy. Right. And if they are happy, it's because they've connected with nature. It all comes down to that. It, that's all it is. I completely agree. So what is your reality? How do you shape it over time? How are you making conscious decisions about how you're self-aware about your reality? Let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. I know people say that, but most people don't ask you to tell us what your reality is. (laughs) What's your reality? How is it shaped? Casually put it in the comments below in all lower caps with emojis. What is your metaphysical (laughs) reality? And uh, thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, you are a deep fountain of unique identity, Vera Structure. Have a lovely day.